Mm -hmm. Please welcome our guests with the day's proverb. Yes, our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the uh, Republic of Liberia, the oldest independent nation on this continent. Mm. When a baboon offers you a banana, imagine how many he has in his stomach. The baboon mm. offers you banana, imagine how many he has in his stomach. Mm -hmm. Your leadership, what do you uh, interpret this proverb? I interpret the proverb to mean, you know, baboons love bananas. Mm. So for a baboon to give you a banana for sure, mm. he truly, truly really must be fed up, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> or he would be, if he took it, he would be a glutton, so to say. Mm. So it, it basically means that um, if somebody gives you something, it's not actually out of, uh, some, 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 some giving is really not out of, uh, because they, are, they really want to give, it's mm. just that they've had enough. Mm. Now they've decided, watch to to share. Mm. It's disposal. Yes. <laughs> You're talking about lands and planning. <laughs> There's also a bit of disposal. Engineer, what's your interpretation of this? Yes, uh, I think it's, uh, an it could be an indication uh, yeah. just from what, uh, Jaja said, mm. the, the the baboon uh, loves uh, uh, bananas, and uh, and the jealousy so. So if you you the baboon gives you a banana, mm. one is tempted to say, maybe I'm being tricked. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll soon be the banana to be eaten. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a banana so that I can get closer. Yes. Absolutely. Mm. Grab me. Absolutely. Mm. What? Absolutely. So yes. chunga. Don't just accept bananas willy nilly, especially coming oh, from a baboon. baboon. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a good one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very, very good interpretation. Yes, sir. Very good ones. Just recently, um, the Environment and Land Court celebrated 10 years since it was established. Yes. That was what, two years ago? Yeah. But you marked it last year. Yes. Am I right? No, we marked it in the year before last. There, okay. Yeah. Mm. And then since then, we've seen some more movements in this court in terms of deciding, all right, environment, land, too busy, too many, too wide. Let's create divisions of this. Mm -hmm. Just take us through that, Judge. Yes. Um, uh, when we were celebrating our 10 years since we were birthed uh, following the new constitution, and we held a conference in Kilifi. And we brought on board so many people from all over the country. And also we had some international guests. So in most of the meetings that we held, the breakaway sessions, the Wanainchi said our cases are taking too long, especially environment matters. And you know environment matters are like salt. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put salt in and you pour water, it will quickly dis it thaw, mm -hmm. yes, dissolve. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if there is a... A denial of oxygen it cannot wait for 10 years uh, environment the environment is polluted people will be dead yeah. mm -hmm. and so they said could you uh, speed up speed up the environmental matters especially environmental matters yes land is also critical mm -hmm. and it's very emotive but allow that environmental matters skip the queue so that we can be able to hear them early enough and we resolve the issues because it has got to do with people's li lives uh, uh, noise, people can't sleep. So please resolve it early so we know whether we will continue to have that um, uh, entertainment spot next there and whether they'll control the noise or how it will go. Mm. So that's why it, uh, we went through that process and so after that conference, the suggestions were made. Then our um, PJ, the presiding judge, pr principal judge, Judge Angote, uh, uh, took up the, from the, there was a jo joint communique that was developed from all the people who attended, mm. took it up, the recommendations with the Chief Justice, and then we basically came up with the procedure, pro we put in place processes to develop, to put in, to um, now split, actually d come up with two divisions. One, dealing mainly with land matters, and another one dealing with environment matters. Not new judges, same judges, mm -hmm. only that now the difference is that land environment matters will not queue. If an environment matter is uh, filed today, I must uh, quickly take it up. And within six months, at most, we must resolve those matters. Mm -hmm. And so the Chief Justice launched the, um, environment, the uh, land division this year, mm -hmm. Uh, I think in March, and now we'll be launching the uh, environment and planning division because land 
is on its own. Then now we have environment and physical planning and planning division, which mm. takes care of the construction and everything. It will be launched on 4th of June. So that was the reason, because the Wanainchi, the ones who said we want a court, a specialized court for land, came and said it's good, but now ensure that we have two divisions so that we don't queue environmental matters. Mm. What are these matters that go into environment and planning? Uh, we'll ma mainly it will be issues of um, pollution, and pollution in terms of uh, noise pollution, uh, construction where there's debris and everything all over the place. Mm. There'll be issues of uh, land uh, repairing. Mm. Um, there'll be issues of uh, climate change, the effects of climate change. And sometimes people say it's an act of God, but of course there's a component where there's, there's a responsibility, our responsibility and responsibility of government on matters mitigation. Mm. Uh, there will be issue, uh, there'll be also issues of uh, depletion of forests, mm -hmm. matters dealing with forest issues, mm -hmm. uh, issues of uh, planning, especially where the environment is affected. Uh, you have haphazardly put your houses, anyhow, vehicles, anyhow. So those mm -hmm. are the matters we deal with. Mm -hmm. Those are many. <laughs> yeah, there are many. And so, Engineer Omwenga, you are a member of the Environment and Planning Working Group. What's that? Yes, uh, thank you. I think uh, uh, as uh, <coughs> justice has indicated, the, the matters environment, the matters uh, planning affect all of us, all of us. And indeed, as, uh, as human beings, we are the, the major player, if not the lead player, in the disruption and, uh, and the destruction of the environment. And that comes through the, our activities. Uh, first, maybe may I may say this so that we are in context. Uh, I'm also the chairman of the Town and County Planners Association. We deal with matters land use, how land is used by various uh, uh, human activities. And uh, these human activities have got to do with what we do, the economic activities we undertake, and so on. So that uh, as, as, a, as a town planner, just see what is within the town. You have got housing development, you have got commercial development, you have got uh, uh, schools, you have got health facilities, you have got the transport system, you have got the utilities, water supply, power systems, and all those kind of things. All these activities are the ones that uh, impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. And in the worst scenario, destruction and therefore pollution of the environment mm -hmm. and therefore we are all part and parcel of this challenge mm. and therefore i think then the the court in its wisdom and i think also invoking the the provisions of the constitution at court 10 in terms of public participation that indeed the court has opened up to members of the public that this matters to do with the environment, matters to do with development planning or land use planning, are matters that, as judiciary, the, the, the judiciary is not the only uh, player in this. We, as the general public, are part and parcel of that uh, exercise. And therefore, we are looking for a solution. It's important that all partners mm. uh, come into play. And therefore, the judiciary, uh, ELC in particular, and therefore this particular division, has opened its doors and invited all and sundry. Engineer, why is this discussion so important? Why must we keep talking about the environment? Mm. Why is it important? I mean, there are other things one can talk about. Fine. Um, hunger, disease. Right. Mm. The environment, we are talking about the environment, we are actually talking about ourselves. Mm. We are part and parcel of the environment. If you think that we are destroying the trees, we are destroying the waters, we are destroying the soils, and therefore we are not affected, we are directly affected. Indeed, the world, that is the point the world has now reached. Okay. You are chairman of this... The Town and County Plan Association. Countrywide? Yes. Okay. Now, I know the courts don't look for issues. Issues go to them. Mm. Okay? You, on the other hand chair a committee that deals with what happens planning what will happen what will happen in the future what can happen what can change what role is this committee doing to ensure 
the compliance that we read about, hear about, talk about. Right. The, as a professional association and also as members of this uh, committee of the, in fact, uh, the way the use of the term is uh, the, the court user committee mm -hmm. where the, 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 the court then has brought various uh, stakeholders together to address the matters of environment of which then as uh, the town planners were part of that. I think the, the, the wisdom is that uh, this issue can best be addressed if all of us come together, if all of us get to be informed of really what the issues are. Okay, because a lot of the time you may find that the, the general public um, may think that uh, there is somebody else who is uh, responsible for protecting the environment. Uh, the state is there, the government is there, and its various agencies, NEMA is there to do that. But I think the realization is, and that's the wisdom, that really we are all contributors to this. So that element, this through this committee, uh, the, 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 the entire nation and the stakeholders, the public, is being involved to create awareness, to educate, okay, and therefore be, be alert and they need to be a solution to this uh, challenge. Mm. Would we say then, Justice Omogeni, that a lot of the cases that come to your court then are cases that an uh, engineer is looking for a solution to when it comes to then the environment? Yes, uh, because um, an environmental matters, of course, touch on issues of sustainable development. Mm -hmm. They will touch on issues of um, natural resource uh, control um, or management. They'll touch on climate change issues. And so um, issues of planning have have everything 100% to do with the environment. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, uh, they, if they don't, if we, if we don't handle the environment well, mm -hmm. then we plan haphazardly then there'll be somebody who is offended and they'll certainly <coughs> end up in our courts. Yeah. But as the engineer has said, the purpose for the working group is actually to try and find solutions mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we as judges also believe that the solutions are not only in court, they are in the communities mm -hmm. because um, this community, the, the, I mean, these problems are not happening from the air, they're happening from, we are the ones who are instigating these problems. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we can also find the solutions to these problems. We're also not saying that because now we have a working group, the judges will not be sitting, as you said, <laughs> uh, we don't want to be lipward and we are not working. <laughs> so um, we will s still sit and, res and d resolve disputes because that's what we are hired to do. But we know that that we also will use the working groups to uh, uh, what would I, like prevention mm. to prevent some of the things that shouldn't happen yeah. so we don't need to be a causal effect factor but we can also prevent so that mm. we don't leave things to go so bad and yeah, then by the time we are stepping surgery. in <laughs> things are so bad yeah so that's so, what we are hoping to do yeah so one of the issues that you mentioned was the time that it takes to adjudicate over some of these cases mm -hmm. and that's one of the issues that you know when I she said look this is it's taking too long one of the examples you gave was of noise pollution. So, and, and I think this is great because we can have these conversations for us to kind of understand the workings of, you know, the courts, the judicial officers, because previously it was uh, something that we never spoke about, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if there's noise pollution, this building construction is taking place and they're banging at all hours of the night, <laughs> going through the thing, and we've tried to ask them to calm it down they've not done so. We come and we say, surely, there's times, I believe the law is 8 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. After 6 p.m., you should not be doing this kind of thing. It's yeah. stipulated, right? But it's over and over again. And so then we say, you know what? The only way then we can do this is if a judicial officer mandated by law can then come and ask you to cease. And still you do not. Then we have the right to take you to court mm -hmm. it seems very cut and dry to me mm -hmm. like yeah. you're making noise you shouldn't be making noise mm -hmm. it's noise pollution mm -hmm. it's against the law yes. at a, a particular time yes. what befuddles me then is that when it goes to court why should it take so long <laughs> it takes so long because uh, you're not the 
court has to listen to both sides. Okay. Because you've just come and said he's making noise. Mm. And then I say, I even okay. have recordings. I've recorded. <laughs> and it's 9 p.m. That is only your side. <laughs> uh, I need also to hear the other side. Are you making noise? Mm. And then they'll come and say, I'm not making noise. Uh, they, 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 are, they are jealous mm. of my construction. <laughs> <laughs> so then I have to give both sides time. Okay, tell me why you say they are making noise. And mm. so you have your evidence. And the other person say, I'm not. They're jealous. Tell me why you're saying they're jealous. Mm. And then after I've listened to all of you, both of you, and then now I will sit down and write the decision. Mm. Because if I did, if I, you just kept making noise, stop. I'm, I'm unfair. Yeah. Mm. The natural justice demands that I must listen to both sides. So I think that's why it takes long. But um, as I said, in environmental matters, we are very quick to say, especially because people come under certificate. Mm. We will certificate matter. If you file a certificate today, the latest I can hear it is tomorrow because it's it's expert i mean mm. like uh, it's online nobody's mm. there you, yes, yes. you've just filed so i'll quickly give my orders that same day sometimes and so i'll say go serve or if it's really bad depending i will maybe give a, 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 an expert order to say in the interim stop construction mm. okay and then uh, so I'm, i've told you stop construction i've also told you go and serve mm. please i'll hear you uh, if, if today is thursday I'll hear you maybe on Friday, mm -hmm. or I'll hear you on Monday. And I must hear you on Monday. Mm -hmm. And when I've said, sir, because you've come to me running and you're saying, it's serious, we are not sleeping, yeah, we even have headaches. Mm. I'll say, serve quickly also. Mm. Come on Monday, I want to hear you quickly. <laughs> and you who has been served, please make sure you file your responses with Monday. So when you come on Monday, I'll hear both of you and I'll say, the interim order that I gave to say stop, it's genuine. Mm -hmm. So stop. I hear you until we finish, mm -hmm. and then we can either continue the construction or shall stop it forever, depending on what you'll present before the court. Because remember, we are not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are the one who is there. Yeah. So it is your evidence that will really tell the judge or the judicial officer that you either have a good case or you are just a jealous neighbor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and often there'll be now some regulator. Yes. There'll be NEMA, and this person can come and say, you know, but me, I was licensed by NEMA to operate. Mm -hmm. And they came and checked. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Let's take a break. 29 minutes to 10. Our guests this morning for our Justice Thursday conversation are the Honorable Lady Justice Jacqueline Mugeni, Judge of the Environment and Land Court, and Engineer Mairura Omwenga. He is a member of the Environment and Planning Working Group but also chair of the Town and County Planners Association countywide. We are talking about the division called the Division of Environment and Planning that will be launched on the 4th of June by the Chief Justice. This is a division of this particular court that will be focusing mostly on the environment and planning matters. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. And we are joined by the Honorable Lady Justice Jacqueline Mugeni and Engineer Mairuro Mwenga, who is a member of the Environment and Planning Working Group. As we talk about this Environment and Planning Judge, there's, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of issues that you find in Environment and Planning that emanate from poor planning or lack of planning. Uh, so you'll find that people are complaining about animals invading their farmlands. There was poor planning, no provision of migratory corridors. You're talking about noise pollution or uh, environmental pollution. This is because industries and residential areas are close mm -hmm. to one another. What kind of planning did we have? Mm -hmm. Talking about riparian lands. Maybe it's actually you are not within riparian land, but activity upstream affects the flow that comes and even breaches the riparian land and enters into people's homes and this kind of planning so he, he will tell us about the planning at the towns and all with your own background of having worked in devolution and now seen the kind of activity that happens countrywide what would be the way forward to make sure that such cases because you said such cases don't necessarily all have to come to the courts mm -hmm. how else would they be addressed you know, like, even when people come to court, we usually mm. encourage what we call court annex mediation. Eh? So, we, the first question we'll ask is, have you tried to talk? Mwonge. Mwonge. Nigeomba mwende mwonge tafadhali. And a lot of times they say, give us 30 days, give us 60 days. And then they come back and say, to mwonge, to mekubaliana. Or they come and say, imeshindikana. But, uh, and, and even on environmental matters, we've done that. And because we are saying the solution is with you. you know that you are on the river, please move. Mm. You know that you're not supposed to be parking the vehicles where you are, please, you know. Mm. Because, I mean, we also come from these communities. So where you refuse completely to agree with each other, then it's left to the judges now to make the decision. A lot of times for environmental matters, we'll go to the ground and see. And of course, uh, uh, we are not collecting evidence, but we are seeing what it is that you have said. Mm. So that when we are writing our judgments or our rulings, we are actually informed of what exactly we have seen and um, 
I think when I look back to 1960, I mean, when we did this voting for the new constitution, mm. Kenyans were saying we are fed up, please. Uh, we are in such a quagmire. Just try and come and help us to, you know, like it's a zigzag spaghetti way of, uh, yeah, madness. <laughs> so please come and try and, 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 and disentangle us so that we can be able to have a, a society that is beginning to flow. Mm. And uh, a lot of the decisions uh, that have come from the courts, even before I went to the judiciary, uh, in the de when I was in the devolution sphere, I think the courts have hacked it, more or less. Mm. The courts have hacked it. Uh, they helped devolution a lot. And I think that um, Kenyans were right when they said, please have a specialized court that will deal with the environment and land matters. And now please have a division that will quicken these particular matters. We Personally, I begin to see as a Kenyan, I begin to see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope. And there's hope because a lot of things now are beginning to become clearer. People are saying, ah, so this is where we were wrong. Kumbe, a road was supposed to pass here. Because then the courts have said, uh, please, the road is passing there. So whatever you had put up, the road you has deal. to pass there. Okay. Yeah. Engineer, are you saying that there's more compliance when it comes to some of these things? Because usually it was like, okay, let's look at settlements on riparian land, for example. Look, we need to live somewhere. There's a house, there's land, put the house. <laughs> these issues don't ever come to the fore until there is an issue, really. You know, um, like J Justice has said, if the court then deems that, look, this is the road. We're passing through here as a channel from point A to B. You can't live here. You can't put up a settlement here. Do we find that, let's say, over the last 10 years, or even now moving forward, that there's a deeper understanding that you can't just put up a structure anywhere because you've seen a space? Is there something like that? And then is there some kind of awareness building over time to get communities to start to understand that you can't do things like that? Or even something like, you can't just throw trash wherever you want. Or you can't just have an industry in the middle of nowhere and burn soot all night. Mm. Do we see that there's starting to be a, an understanding that, you know, we have to live like, you know, human beings? Thank you. The, I think we say in planning that uh, when, we, when we fail to, to plan, mm. plan we to are planning to fail. The, I think as a country and uh, as a people, we need to have that at the forefront, mm. that planning is important in all areas of our operations. Uh, indeed, a, a rational being uh, plans. Now, in a number of uh, instances, I think we have, uh, we have failed to recognize that element and that is why we are facing these challenges. Number one, I think we have, uh, in many instances, we have failed to prepare the required development plans. And if I may now speak about uh, uh, towns, mm. we have not been good at preparing plans, which then guide everybody uh, as to what needs to be done where. Mm. The I must say, for example, for the city of Nairobi, the 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 last serious and I use that word <laughs> purposely development plan that was prepared to guide the development of the city of Nairobi as a town development plan was in 1948 for a plan for the colonial city of Nairobi, and that's the title. The, there was an attempt to, to prepare an updated one in 1973, but that was really a strategic uh, plan for the city of Nairobi and its metro region. It wasn't a, a, a town development plan as such. A, a, and that uh, we, we used uh, until uh, about 2014, 2015, that we prepared now what is called the Nairobi Integrated City Development Plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that plan that was prepared in 19, uh, sorry, 2014, 2015, was one which is strategic. It simply deals with the broad issues, mm -hmm. the broad issues. It doesn't get into the finer details, mm -hmm. okay? 
Now, you'll be surprised that uh, we have not then been able to prepare the, the detailed mm. uh, development plans that will be very clearly be able to show that in this place, this is a riparian reserve. We are talking about Nairobi River. This is the extent mm. of the riparian reserve. This is Ngong River. This is the extent of the, of the riparian reserve. We've not gone down to say then if we're talking about housing development in the various neighborhoods, this is the type building typologies we are talking about. These are the building heights we are talking about. These are the, uh, the plot coverages so that we, 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 we make sure then that uh, if we have, you have a piece of, 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 of property that you want to build, you are only building 50% and leaving 50% open so that there's enough green space for our children to play. Uh, so that there's enough green space, so that there's enough uh, greenery, because greenery is the is the breathing uh, lungs mm -hmm. of, of 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 our lives. Okay, so you find because of that, then you find you have a piece of land, and uh, and this is the examples we are seeing in places like Kilimani, Lavington now, okay, where there was simply one family household on half an acre or an acre. You now find that that is being knocked down and you have got massive 400, 500 families. Yeah. From where, starting from sim a, a simple uh, household, and now suddenly you have got four, 500. Engineer, who is responsible for ensuring that such a plan exists? Uh, fortunately, the, the government. The, the government and... F the, 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 in this case, the Nairobi City County uh, government. But of course, they, the two levels of government, national and county, work together. And there are various uh, state agencies. Okay? So you, 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 you find then that we have been slow to make sure that these are, are prepared. And even where they are prepared, enforcement has been lacking. We here as the government, or we here is the. Mm. The, the other citizens of the country i think uh, in these matters it, uh, it it must we must put it in the plural form but the government i think must lead from the front okay okay but it, not mm -hmm. by itself but it, it also requires the support of all of us okay. as community just as is there legislation that supports the, this planning that we are speaking of Say, for instance, that every 50 years you must plan. Mm. Every 20 years you must plan. Because from what the engineer has just said, this is, this is daunting. This is, this is terrifying. Meaning, from 1948, we've just been floating. And every once in a while, a group of people come together and said that this is a strategy. And then we keep floating. Yeah. Which essentially means we've, what's guiding us are one vagary after another, one group of vagary after another. And you're, you're not really sure where to stand. Mm -hmm. It's vibes and inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is. You see, um, for, for us in courts, as judges, we are there to resolve disputes. We, we, our job is not to be, uh, to be planners. Mm -hmm. We are equally affected with this haphazardness that happens because we are citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. And um, we only resolve issues that come to us. Indeed, we know about the 1948 plan. It's not the law mm. it is a plan and so that is part of some of the things that can be produced in evidence mm. uh, in in the courts and so we have bits and pieces of laws that we look to when the matters of planning come before us matters of constructions we have the national construction authority we have the the physical planning act mm. we have actually the physical there's a, a planning committee that has been set up in nairobi to ensure that to address some of the issues that uh, uh, engineer has spoken about so on our part we only interact with this when there's a dispute when there's no dispute we are also You're okay we are just like I mean, all everybody else what if things have gone amok as a result of what was supposed to be the plan and in terms of approvals that have been given that should not have been given so something happens as a result yes. of an approval having been given that really should not have been yes. because of the way the plan has been set out and yes. that's essentially law yes plan then yes. because of this plan yes that is the law that you must abide by. Yes. However, as we know is the practice, based on what engineer has said, we'll have approvals for things that maybe shouldn't. Yes. Right? Whether there are skyscrapers in a place where you shouldn't have a skyscraper, yes. mm -hmm. whether there is a building coming up where sewage system is not adequate to, 
service yes, the whole area. Yes, yes. Now, because of that, you have burst pipes, you have leakage, you have all sorts of drama going on, right? Yes. So because of that, me who's here, I have this issue with a developer. As far as he or she is concerned, they're doing what they've been approved to do. Yes. But it is affecting me. Would you bring in the plan at that point and say, hang on a minute, this should not be happening as a result of that, even if it is a dispute between... So you make the county, the authorities culpable? Do you make them culpable because of this dispute that's happening? Because you said we're supposed to be resolving disputes between person A and B. However, this dispute, if you look at the end or you look at the beginning, Mm -hmm. it has come as as a result of something that has happened there. There, yes. Now, again, our role as judges is to resolve disputes. If you've not sued C, you've only sued A and B, I have no, res- under the law, I, have, I cannot start extending and saying, oh, please, C also come. You know, we don't, <laughs> <laughs> the courts, really? as you say, the courts don't look for disputes. Mm. <laughs> so that's why I say, please, when you're going to court, ensure you have done your research well. Mm-hmm. The, you, what you have said, we see that every day in court. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very wonderful cases, uh, you lose a wonderful case because you went it the wrong way. And my mm-hmm. job as a judge is not to tell you, oh, by the way, had you thought, I can't give you a then clue. it means I've stopped being a judge, I've become a litigant. So I should stop. I'm, I'm actually, I get conflicted. Mm-hmm. I go to the other side to bring the case, if I'm the one who is affected. So the, 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 the awareness that needs to be done in this country is really massive. I don't know who, who should do it. We are trying there now when we are here as judges, we are trying. But I think we need to educate people a lot, even when you bring your case to court, mm. ensure you've sued all the people who are concerned. So somebody has made an <coughs> approval, it's wrong, mm. but you haven't brought him to court. What do I do? The, the person who has done the mistake is out there. You brought the wrong person before me. It's like so arresting the wrong person. Sure. So do you find yourself biting your nails sometimes? Saying, yes, oh and wondering. God, I wish they had actually done this. I, you can't all the time I can't. Mm. I can't because I'm, I'm a judge to resolve disputes that are before me, not to wish that it came. Mm. Yeah, because what is before me is not what should have come. Mm. It's unfortunate. Mm. But sometimes in our decisions, we'll say, but the body that is charged with this responsibility may be shame on you. I mean, a sentence here and there, yeah. we hope that this judgment will also be served on this body so that, mm. but it's, 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 it's very heartbreaking mm. to see uh, somebody coming before you with, with, with the wrong parties. It's mm. very heartbreaking mm. for a judge because your hands are tied. Mm. Mm. So you're saying in that, what do you call that, where, where the judgment, in your judgment, you also mentioned some of that. This, yeah, I'll just mention, yeah, and, and maybe like, so there are judgments where we've made some interdicts also. Mm. We've said, for example, uh, this body, therefore make sure that, for example, there are toilets that have been constructed. There was a, sim- a case yep. like that yep. uh, along the roads, public mm. toilets, because really people can't be going to the bush yep. mm. in the 21st century mm. um, and that's an interdict mm. uh, uh, judgment that needs to be supervised mm. so that now the person comes to that body that, since they were not maybe so they Party come to this. say we have done it or we've not done it we've ha- we have such particular cases but we have no we have no enforcement police for the judiciary so our hands basically are not tied but we are not able to stretch them as fast as wide mm. because of the limitations of implementation of our judgments or even bring in but also sometimes when uh, uh, people come to court and we think there's uh, um, an expert that has been uh, hasn't been called a judge suomoto mm. can be able to ask a, a, an expert like the engineer to come and shed light on this mm. planning of 1948 mm. so that we can understand so that when i write my judgment it is also informed mm. yeah mm. Because then the, the problem is in that planning and the lack of planning mm. and then the lack of proper implementation of whatever is happening that will lead to so many cases. People in Rongai, for example, can today go and wonder who to sue okay. because a lion has jumped over the fence eaten and my eaten dog. my dog. Mm. Okay. So who do I, do I charge KWS? Do yes. I charge the lion? Do no. The no. Government <laughs> of the county government of Kajiado. Who, who, who ought to come to court in such a case? If... If you listed all of them, yes, you know, good. let's say you say you KWS in charge of the animal and the neighboring park, you county, you're the one who gave us the approval to start you building here, yeah. and you should have known that there's that a park the lion, nearby. Yes. You, uh, Nema, you should the have lion. made sure. You should animal. actually. So you should you list should. all those. You know, it's like I, 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 I am of the old system, the last form six system. Mm. We used to do uh, when we would do answer questions. The teachers used to say. Write everything. Mm-hmm. Let the examiner pick what is relevant. <laughs> in the same manner, in the same way. 
Please, if you think a party is relevant to your cause, for heaven's sake, list them. Let the party come to court and say, I, there's nothing. In, and in I'm your pleadings, please ensure that at least in your pleadings, you've mentioned why you're suing them. Eh? So you mm. don't just list everybody. And then when I read your pleadings, there is no way why you've su There's nothing against me. Mm. Yeah. So in your pleadings, make sure you've mentioned this KWS, whoever, whoever that you're suing, that you've chosen to sue. So that if they can come to court and say, actually... I, I have been enjoined wrongly. Mm -hmm. The court will also make that decision at the pre at the initial stages because they will make those applications. So please sue anybody you think is related to your problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I think just to add uh, to this uh, discussion, mm -hmm. the I think it's true to say that uh, as a country, we are not lack of law legislation starting from the constitution i think what it is that we are suffering from is lack of implementation of what is provided for in our legislation starting from the constitution uh, and this is not just with the new constitution but right from the the, the older the old constitution so there is enough legislation there's enough legislation that we have, but I think it's the implementation that we are really very, wa very weak in. And uh, this is where then it, it, it actually calls for a, a society that is, uh, is uh, informed, that's aware of their rights, that is aware the need to, 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 to protect the environment, that is not just the, the government and government agencies and personnel who are responsible for making sure that our our environment is protected, that whatever is, if it's building works that are taking place, it is not just one person, but that even government must be held to account. That indeed, even as officers of, of government, you must be aware that you must be held accountable in that uh, regard. So th I think the weakest point that we have as a country is a citizenry that... Uh, that uh, is not up really to, to, to make sure that uh, what is provided in the law and in the policies is, uh, is, uh, is enforced in that uh, regard. I think a lot of the time th that is the weakest uh, uh, link in our, uh, the, the discussion we are talking about, whether it's environment, whether it's uh, development uh, planning of our cities and indeed the, the, the whole country. Engineer, can I disagree with you? Yep. Okay. You see the you're an engineer. She is a judge, meaning she's a lawyer. She's a court officer. Here we work in the media space. There are things we can do. There are things we cannot do. I mean, we may think we can. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, you're an engineer. The knowledge you have, I don't have. Now, when bodies that you represent or the conglomeration of bodies that you sort of like uh, lead and chair, don't speak about things that are their areas of expertise mm. loudly enough. We don't know. When mm. you speak about it, we the citizens then understand. Mm. If you don't speak about it, we'll be guessing and figuring out and trying to read and understand what it's all about. Like you're telling me about the Planning Act of 1996. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll say, okay, fine. Mm. And then there needs to be a concerted effort for people who uh, specialist in certain areas. We are accused as a media of either uh, pro uh, uh, promoting propaganda or saying salacious things. We are constantly being sued, by the way, just so that you understand. Mm. <laughs> but we will argue and say, you know, actually, we are simply fulfilling the mandate that is our calling. So my disagreement is, yes, the citizenry may fail. But the citizenry are failed by members of that same citizenry who have a more important role because they are better informed mm. and who don't do what they're supposed to do as effectively as they should. Because if we keep talking about planning, zoning, mm, mm. there's a gap within, uh, you say, within the, the, the legal framework that we have. And then you have legislators, whether it's in parliament, all these people have a role to play. Now, if they do not play their role, the general citizenry who are not in those spaces, what are they supposed to do? For example, as the working group, what is your mandate mm -hmm. as the environment and planning working group? You said you're a court user committee, right? Yeah. That brings in expertise into this conversation. What do you do? I think that uh, one of the uh, key objectives mm -hmm. of, of this uh, 
uh, working group is really to synthesize, yeah. to educate, yeah. to mobilize, to be where we are this morning, yeah. what we are doing now, okay, mm. to bring this conversation to the larger public. Mm. And uh, the, 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 and indeed uh, a lot of the time, uh, a forum like this one, I think we're not only just reaching our professionals and, and whatever, we're reaching a wider, a wider, a, a wider uh, community and not only just within Kenya, but globally. Mm. Okay, so this is one of the greatest things that uh, uh, we as user communities and for example, professional associations is to be able to, to engage the public to be able to address these matters mm. and find a solution uh, to it. Mm. I think one of the, uh, the, the, the weaknesses that uh, we, we see is uh, in uh, a number of, uh, call them civil society groups, professional societies, the issue of uh, inadequate resources being available, okay, yep. then it means your ability to be able to widen network yep. and educate the public is, uh, is limited, mm. okay? So that element is, uh, is certain there. But I think one of our key objectives is really to bring this information to members of the public. And that is why you'll find in this user group, we're not only dealing with professionalization and civil war, but we're actually dealing with uh, a neighborhood. Okay, yeah. Yeah. associations. Yeah. Okay, yes. they are a key mm. partner in these uh, uh, discussions. Mm. Okay, so that people are really able to address the issues as they and are they can on rise the ground. Up. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I know, for example, of an example of uh, there's a lawyer called Alfred Dambiri. We've hosted him here before. Mm -hmm. He's very active yes. on matters of Nairobi and planning mm -hmm. and the development. He's gone to court once, twice. Mm -hmm. He's harassed by the construction workers, by the developer, by the police in some cases. Judge, when such a person comes to court and says, look, guys, there's a development that's here that looks to be flouting regulations, and a court issues its decision on the matter, but the enforcement does not happen, and the development continues, what's the recourse? <laughs> yeah, don't give up. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, as my colleague has said, uh, engineer, the working group is here now. Uh, we as uh, judges, our role ends at delivery of decisions. You know, we can't follow up and say, Ile decision, Ilitoa, eh, iko api, mm. no. Our role ends at, once we've delivered the decision, the parties who have come to court, it's their responsibility to ensure that eh, what we are, the court has said is being done. Mm. And there is a, a provision in law which allows you to come back to court for contempt. Cite me, for, I'm sure you've heard that. And of mm. course, there are many times people have said, oh, people are not obeying, eh, government is not obeying court orders. There are a lot of interdicts that can be done. So, citizens should be encouraged if, um, first and foremost let's try and resolve our conflicts out of court let's try court and mediation let's also try adr mm. let's try community resolutions and where the becomes very tough as you've said my colleague and hi ndambiri if you're listening mm -hmm. he was my classmate mm -hmm. uh, he's he really believes in human rights mm -hmm. uh, he, and, and he, he whatever he does is doing it from the bottom of his heart so i really honor him uh, if you, the worst comes to the worst and it, you, you've uh, been unable to resolve the issues, you come to court. Once the court makes its decision, please ensure that it is followed to the letter. If developers are disobeying, they'll be served with contempt proceedings. And if you are contemptuous and you're not obeying the court, we have under the law, the, especially under the Environment and Land Court Act, we can sentence you to six months in prison or you actually a fine of 20 million. So Baba. it's not easy. So the citizens should know that mm. they are the ones who are not using what they have. I'm not saying please run to court for everything, <laughs> mm. but I'm saying there is a solution. Mm. And especially for environmental matters, especially on issues of disobedience of court orders on things like construction, mm. please, if you can, come to court. The, when we had the ELC at 10, the citizens said, environmental matters touch on everybody. Yeah. Please don't charge us filing fees. Mm. This is something that is work in progress. The Chief Justice promised us when she was launching the working group on land that they are looking at how best they can address this policy issue. Right. So we remove filing fees so that you can be able to come to court, not frivolously, mm. but actually to address environmental matters. So the courts are here, the courts are open, the courts are willing to assist because we stay in this country. Very good. And on the 4th of June, this particular division will be launched by the Chief Justice.
right? Yes. yes. And this is the Environment and Planning Division of the Environment and Land Court, where we take all our environment matters now. Asante Nisana for joining us. Thank you. Honorable Lady you. Justice Jacqueline Mogeni, Judge of the Environment and Land Court, and Engineer Mairura Omwenga, who is the member of the Environment and Planning Working Group and Chair of the Town and County Planners Association. 10 a.m., a minute past 10. My goodness, time has gone. Thank you for tuning in. See you again tomorrow.